and welcome to Art Science Nature Knit. I'm Natalie, Cool Water Hot Sun, and this is you are on Trinidad Head in Trinidad, California, on the leading edge of the North American North American continent. We're going that way, ever so slightly, every so often, and up. We're also going up, but we're on top. We are um, on a huge sea stack jutting out into the Pacific Ocean, and I've been spending a lot of time around here lately. Um, and we hauled all our stuff out here to talk about the knitting, of course. But um, it's been a long time. I missed you guys. Hi. Um, thanks for hanging in there, everyone who has um, checked in and said hello and asked me how everything's going. Everything's going great. Um, don't be fooled by the clouds. It's beautiful out here, but um, I'm out here today because it's we had rain for two days and then we had a little clearing and we're in for four more days of rain. Um, but don't be fooled. Actually, I had to show you, this is what it usually looks like around here in the wintertime, but this winter has been insanely warm and sunny and beautiful. As you guys probably know, California's in a drought. So um, for all of you guys in the Midwest who are freezing still, um, sorry, it's been really nice here. It's actually um, been very warm and not windy and calm. Only just recently in the last week or two has it changed to this more normal pattern. Um, of winter even though it's february um this is when we usually get spring around here so we just skipped winter we did summer in the winter and we went straight to spring and the huckleberries are sitting among huckleberries and silk tassels and um we're hanging out here and actually there's tons of things in bloom the huckleberries in bloom and um We'll go look at a little bit more of that. We'll hang out here for a little bit. Um, this is a peregrine nesting site. You can almost always see a pair of them up here. In several other places we've been hiking around this winter, we've seen a bunch of peregrines. But um, this is Trinidad State Beach behind us. And in a little while, we'll go hike around down there and look at a few things. Uh, and then we'll go see some other sunny other views all around Trinidad and um and then we'll go back to my house yes I've been renovating my house for the last seven months and we'll go back there have a little sneak preview there'll be a whole separate episode on the house and then there's going to be a whole separate episode on all the boating I've been doing all last year uh and um so yeah we'll go do a couple more things after we hang out here Okay, what else? Um, let's see. So I guess we could call this episode Ho, 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 Ho. Not just because I have a whole bunch of hoes, but also I actually have a Christmas fo. Fa la 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 fo, 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 finished object. Well, almost finished object. So my very dear friends, Anna and Ariel, hello. Adopted a baby last August, and her name is Estella. And I knitted her a stocking. And this Anna very much wanted fuzzy beard, so that's some Angora. And she really wanted Santa Claus, and she really wanted the name. So that was really fun. This was actually an incredibly long, arduous knit. Um, it was a kit. I substituted some of the yarns for more richer colors. This is Cascade 220. I, I got a different blue because I wanted that to be a richer background. And I did a whole bunch of little Fair Isle patterns. The kit just had stripes. And what else? Um, the pattern from the kit, I used green and the red and the white. Um, Oh, no, I substituted the green. I wanted a richer green, not such a candy cane green. Um, but it was neat. It came with all the little pieces to do the antlers and the star and 
the shiny moon. The moon has sort of an iridescent yarn, which is fun. So um, it was knitted flat and seamed up, and that was totally bizarre. <laughs> And then I actually took the time to sew in a reinforced um, rigid holder. Since it's such a big stocking, I didn't want it to stretch too much, and I wanted it to have a little loop for hanging. So I sewed that inside, and that took that was quite a, a chore, but I think it's going to really hold up under all those Christmas goodies for years and years and years and years for Stella! So Stella is star and so she's got a star and then I have this lovely I happened to get a package last Christmas that had um ribbon with has stars on it so um I was thinking of I can't figure out how to put it on there I was thinking of doing this sort of thing where I make sort of a bow you know that sort of a thing and sew it on there. Thusly. What do y'all think? Some sort of little... It's just so perfect. I have to get it in there somehow. I don't want to obscure Santa. Anyway, whatever. Stella! Welcome home! We love you! Sadly, I didn't get to go for her first Christmas, but... She'll get it from now on. Santa looks a little googly-eyed. Rudolph looks a little... They look a little crazy, but that's okay. Mwah! We love you. So yeah, what else? Um, yeah, it's been a long year. Last year, um, I got a visit from a viewer. Hi, Nina. Nine o'clock came by, and she gave me these beautiful fingerless mitts. I don't have them with me. I have. They will be in another finished object field trip. Um, but she. I was wearing them and wearing them and wearing them. What I have always worn, I'm on this fingerless glove kick now. She basically made me understand that, of course, I could do it. But, yeah, so years and years. These are, like, the cool um, convertible mitts that you can get from Guatemala, uh, Argentina, Ecuador, maybe. And I have, worn, I have had two pairs of these, and now the other two individual pieces are so blown out that <laughs> and these are even so blown out that finally I was like I these were so handy I wore these in the field for work in, around here in the wet winters for years these wool was the way to go like over neoprene and everything else that people were wearing I was wearing these religiously and they're so handy you know whip them out take notes put them back on totally warm and comfortable but kind of loosely constructed and um, thick. And so I decided I really needed to custom make my very own bomber pair. I mean, I love the ones Nina gave me. They're sweet, you'll see. Um, but they, they don't have, they're just, they don't have um, the fingers and they're really lightweight and they're really nice, but they're kind of like a nice towny glove. And these, I really wanted some outdoorsy Ha, huh, the brim of my hat keeps flipping up. Um, so I grabbed some Cascade 220. Well, actually, for my birthday in November. Thank you for all the happy birthdays, y'all. You're sweet. I got some lovely Cascade 220 in two different colors from a friend of mine and went to town on these. See that? I love them. I totally they're so bomber and they are so warm and they are going to be the thing for cycling, hiking, you know, because you need your fingers. You just do. And these are so warm already. I was wearing them without the thumb cap for a little while. I hadn't put the little mushroom cap on yet. <laughs> and I just had the covers and sure enough, my thumb was cold, but everything else was totally warm. So these are going to be the bomb. I put, um, a moon and the other one is gonna have star and so what happened was so I've been doing these on I've been doing a lot of stuff on my collage double pointed squares and these are um, their US 5 3.75 millimeter 
and I love them. I absolutely love these needles. They hold on tight. The only complaint I have is the tips are a little blunt and they scratch. They scratch really easily. The, the patina is starting to come off of them, but I don't mind. I love the scrapey texture. I know that would drive some people crazy, but I like it. So when I first started out, I did um, 40 stitches around and made a whole entire mitt and increased for the thumb gusset, 16 stitches, and it just came out too small. It, and so I had made one whole fingerless mitt without the caps and um, didn't like it. And I was over at my friend's brand new tree house and gave it to her, fit her perfectly. So I made one for her. And then I made one for me, and then I made another one for her. <laughs> and now I'm making, now I need to make another one for me. So that's where, that's what's in progress on the needles um, right now. With the lovely Cascade 220, I know that the light green color is called Lake Chelan, but I don't know what the dark blue is. My friend's glove is, she has one blue one and one green one because I'm going to run out of yarn for my second glove. That's all I got left if I don't, if I didn't do that. So this one may end up having a different color cap. But anyway, freaking love them. There's, I'm one right now. I don't, I don't think I'm going to take that off because it's kind of cold out here. So it's actually a really warm storm. Pineapple Express. I looked up at Squaw Valley. Um, and that they're having like 50 degree daytime temperatures. They're getting snow, but not really very much. So fingerless mitts are so easy to make that I decided to make another pair for another man friend of mine. I'm gonna take this off so I can put this other one on. So last winter, or like, uh, what was it November, December? I worked at our local yarn shop, yarn, um, over Christmas, and a lot of people were buying fingerless mitts. A lot. And so I realized these are these are easier than a sock, in my opinion. Don't you think? They're just like simple tube. If you don't put the fingers on, you could easily put the flap on. So that's what I'm doing with this. So my friend my bike ride with also really wanted a really, you know, thick, nice, his hands get really cold really easily. Um, so I got out this, I don't remember what this is, Cascade. It's a Cascade Eco Wool. It's not their Eco Duo, which is part alpaca. It's just, I just think it's Eco Wool. Probably um, Peruvian Highland Wool. Um, and I just had this around. And so I started cabling for him. I got this far and here's the, the little cap it is ready to go. And these are on the same collage square size seven. I adore. And just doing a little um, cable fun up front. Pretty cool. And liking it. Liking it a lot. I He's been trying it on as we go, so that's good. And it's gonna keep him really warm. They're really warm. I really like them. So I noticed something going on with this that I noticed in my vest that I'm still making out of the seaweed seaweed wool. Um, that, and I learned something new. So, so when I was making that vest on the left side of the cable, it was always really loose. I start getting ladders. And so I was having to double things up to tighten that up. But I noticed just in regular ribbing on the, you know, on the ribbing side, it was also doing it there. And I don't know why that is. I think it must be that this wool just isn't very springy. It's kind of, it's just a two ply, really loosely plied. Do you guys get that? Do you guys get ladders to the left, if you're looking at your netting to the left side of your, um, your pearls get loose on the left side of your knits and ribbing or cabling. 
Let me know. So, I need to know. I'm just going to come over there and see if everything's okay. It's the first time I've ever recorded with my phone. Okay, so all's well. Yay. So what else has been going on? Yeah, so fingerless mitts, easier than socks. Don't even need a pattern. Easy. Well, I've made one glove by a pattern, and every other glove I've made has been just winging it. It's that easy. That easy. So what else? We've got ho, 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 ho. we got a sock. We've got a man sock, same guy. Warm. Warm. Oh yeah, wait. So <laughs> lots of people were buying fingerless mitts. That is cool. So I had this idea that I could just make a bunch of fingerless mitts and um, sell them next winter. But what is super cool, and I will insert pictures here, is I was watching The Hobbit and there are I was totally getting off on all the textiles and fabrics and weavings and things that they're that all the dwarves are wearing and they're many of them are wearing some of the coolest fingerless gloves. I'm gonna make Gandalf's fingerless gloves. They're just reverse stockinette, not even fingers, just so much fun. I think maybe I could Don't steal it! My idea. The Hobbit Dwarf Fingerless Mitt Collection. Fun. Anyway, um, back to this sock is really nice. Um, so these are it's Cash Vero. Uh, let me see ball bands right here. <laughs> Thank you, Huckleberry. Cash Vero DK, which has some nylon in it. It's fifty-five percent merino, thirty-five, thirty-three percent acrylic. 12% cashmere. Oh. So this guy would come in, came in the shop one time to say hi, and he was like, where's the cashmere? So of course I had to make him socks out of cashmere. And then Kitsil, Rowan Kitsil K's, which of course is 70% mohair and 30% silk. And I'm doing the thing where I um, carry the kid silk in the heel and the foot and the toe and then this is my own pattern but it is a um variation it's a couple of patterns put together so the the cuff and top pattern are a variation on hermione's everyday sock so what i have done is i have added a slip row and the slip row staggers as you go up the sock and then I've put the increases on the bottom of the foot, which is a technique I got out of um, my favorite Cat 40 book. Um, new Pathways for Soft Knitters. You know that one. So, um, ho, 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 ho. And the other one is started on my high, high, sharp, no, just high, high, uh, size two. Kind of thick socks, really nice socks. But he's tried this one on, it can go in a shoe and everything. It's not too thick, but dang is it warm and soft and cozy. And I did also, I finished the Coriol, one Coriolis sock. So I did drop a stitch way down here. What am I gonna do about that? What am I gonna do about that? These are so nice, I've already worn them. <laughs> worn this one. And this is fun, you know, just with some other sock. This spirals all the way around the sock. It's very nice. And then the other one spirals the other way. And this is Mountain Colors Barefoot in the Riverbed colorway. Oh, love it. I love it so much. Here's Ginger's little stitch markers on there with the lovely gems. And these, yeah, I have several sets. I obviously I'm a double pointed needer girl, and I love it. I have been um, 
actually trying to be a faster knitter and I kind of gave up on it. If you guys done this, you know, everybody does this, I think once in a while, decides to knit the other way. I'm a thrower and I really feel like I can crank on my tension in that way. And I tried doing the picking style. I actually looked up speed knitting on YouTube and checked out the fastest knitter in the world. And um, <laughs> I tried it on the mitts because they're just knit, 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 knit. And I, I'm fine with it. I like it. It's great. And I picked up a lot of tricks on how you just basically don't move your fingers very much. You do a lot of um, hand motions, but your fingers are pretty much staying close up to the tips. I liked it, but my tension was way loose. I don't want to know if I want to give up speed for tension. Anyway, I like dense knits. I suppose I could go down a needle size or two or something like that. I'm going to keep trying, but you know how it just fries the brain. Sometimes you just need to knit. I bought my bag from Fluffy Dog Owner. Thank you, Debbie. I take this bag everywhere. This is the go-to bag. Even my notebook fits in there. So yeah, so anyway, I have buttons. I forgot to say this. My friend, when she gave me my um, gift, also gave me little buttons. So I was, of course, had to make convertible mitts because I need a button back here so that when this is back, it can button. And these are perfect little, perfect little buttons. else there's definitely older projects that are still on the needles back at home that I have been working that I haven't really worked on much I got a couple jackets I got a jacket and a vest that I haven't worked on and another sock but I haven't touched them but I have touched this this is craziness this is um lovely Debbie bliss alpaca silk you've seen it a million times it keeps growing and growing and growing skirt yes marianne h is also knitting a skirt i want to see your skirt but slowly but surely it's gonna get right Ugh, it's such a pain it's a serious pain like i'm carrying all these colors and i'm just gonna knit and you can't tell it's I keep increasing. I increase about every four rows, but um, right now it would barely make it past my hips. But I'm just going to keep going until I run out of yarn or it gets a little past knee length. And it's just going to be a nice little ruffly thing. It's going to be A line. Ugh. It's just crazy. It's just crazy. It's just insane how much yarn management if i ever do a project like this again i'm going to take a whole bunch of socks and put each ball of yarn in a sock because as it is i'm having to do a lot of you see me? a lot of detangling management on this project uh and this is so funny this is in my bag so anna and ariel who's now have stella I officiated their wedding, and that's the bags they gave away at their wedding. So that was fun. And one more thing. My friend's water bottle holder. So I knitted, because if, if I was to have just knitted a strap this way, I feel like it would have really stretched. And so I knitted the strap. I knitted the bag first, based on her dimensions just this acrylic yarn she gave me and then picked up for the band and went back and forth like this hoping it wouldn't stretch as much but it still does it still cuts into her neck so she gave me this seat belt so she came over marked it for her so i'm gonna take it in get rid of all this and she gave me a strap a seat belt strap that i'm gonna sew this onto so that it has some Firmness, you know, you know what I mean? Oh, okay, so there are other finished objects. I did finish another hat for my friend who is my carpenter who has been helping me work on my house for the last seven months. 
And we'll have a finished object field trip for that with him in it. He's also the fiddle player, Randall. We all love him. Everyone loves him. Um, but I also did finish this. This was designed by the woman who owns the yarn shop and where I was working. And it's the little bows hat. It's her pattern, Sunny Scribner's pattern. And I knitted one and it was too small. And so I gave it away. And then I knitted this one. <laughs> so, and it is Malabrigo Silky Merino in the Indesita colorway. It was really nice. And it's half silk and 51% silk, 49% merino. And it's my new go-to hat. Ugh. So it's got these little slip stitches that you pull into bows. And um, when we go back to the house, I will be giving away Hi. this pattern. Hi! <laughs> I'm making a recording talking about all my knitting. <laughs> So, um, when, so when we go back to the house, I will give away this pattern, and I'll also give away another one of her, oh, the, the, a pair of her uh, designs for Fingerless Minutes, yay! Hers are based on a Harry Potter character. And I have another prize or two, maybe, because y'all have been so awesome and you've totally hung in there. It's been pretty cool. Um, you know, I... I really appreciate all the encouragement um, on the Ravelry board. Um, it was really helpful. You guys had really good suggestions and confirmed that length is a good thing for knitters. They like to just sit down and listen to one long show and not um, have to push the button. And that's what I like too. So thank you for that feedback. Um, also, um, that. Uh, Really, you just want more and more of this. So I'm going to do more and more of this. Don't, I, I didn't go away. It happens. I've, I've noticed that a lot of podcasters come and get, I mean, you know, life happens. So I don't, I'm really excited to show you what else has been going on at the house and um, some other adventures around here. And so stay tuned for that. And. Um, it's funny, the, <laughs> I sympathize with the people who are dealing with the blip issue and the iTunes issue because since I was never able to get into blip, uh, I, everyone is now having all the same problems that I've always had. <laughs> so thank you everyone who has told me that iTunes does not matter. I'm going to try one more, a couple more things and then I'm going to give up, um, but you guys are super awesome and know that we don't actually need iTunes. I'm going to try to get, I'm going to get some professional consulting from a computer friend of mine. And I just feel like I'm this close. Like there's just these little glitches that need to be figured out. And it's kind of a fun challenge. So I think I'm going to try to figure it out. But either which way, I know you guys are out there and I know you guys are watching. And it's really fun to have a, um, gang of folks who like to hang outside knitting. And I'm going to say again, thanks Lori for doing that poster pictures of you knitting outdoors. That's awesome. You can still post pictures of you knitting outdoors there at the Ravelry group. And um, what else? Huh. Maybe with notes. Just hanging in the bushes, you know. I think that's it. Yeah. Let's go back to the house and we'll go. Either we're going to go walking for a little bit or we're going to go back to the house. Either way, I'll see you guys in a little bit. <laughs> Thanks for coming out to Trinidad. Let's go look at more of it. See ya.
Shoo go get it. Wanna go out? Should we go outside? Should we go outside? It's nice out there, why don't we? Collard greens! And lots of pretties that are wet. It is so spring. Chard, kale, artichokes. This is the backyard, and it is highly neglected because so much work has been going on inside the house. But there's so many glorious things going on back here right now. It needs to be planted. The hair is a highlight. Oh my god. Peaches are budding. Let's see if we can get it to focus on that. There we go. <laughs> the buds, the buds, the buds, the buds. Peach back there, just in the background. That's a flowering plum, but can't see the it's all pink and it's just been raining so hard and so windy that everything's gotten knocked off um this is where the herb garden is i know it doesn't look like it but there's comfrey coming up and um borage there's a lilac it's so spring here so spring it's my little house that's where i live future bathtub and the pear is also budding out and we have California Bay and a fuchsia and an almond and a California lilac this is all flowers in the summertime all Flowers. Those are purple when they're blooming. And raspberries coming up. Oh my god, that was half that size yesterday. Things are busting out fast. Fire pit. We've got the Van Dusen River rocks. We've got slate from Nevada. We've got uh, lots of ancient riverbeds from Utah and Colorado. And of course, fat granites from right around here. Trinity River. And fire pit itself is also lined with rocks from the Tr Trinity River. Cherts from the Upper Mad River. Right here. Sandstones from around here. Schist from the Navarro River down in Mendocino County. And there's a prize. These rocks all look so beautiful around a fire. When the fire is flickering, the ancient seabed comes back to life. Even though it's constant project around here, that doesn't stop the bulbs from growing. All the pizza herbs, rosemary, sage, thyme, oregano. Yes, I know. Things need pruning. But. Curly willow fixing to pop. And. 
creeping time. Here are fossils from the Logal Eel River south of here, Scotia Bluffs. Uh, some mugwort transplanted from the river. Smells so good. Why don't we have smell o vision? Yarrow gooder. The succulent garden is looking good. Really growing up after a couple of years. Finally keeping the artichoke out. It's so fun how so many different things can thrive here with our mild winters. And the pathways were last year's last year's project. And I know the cardboard looks bad, but I ran out of mulch. I had an enormous mulch pile in the driveway for seven and a half months. It's where I started this project and got distracted. But as you can see, there's cardboard underneath all of where the mulching is. And it works like a charm. So someday the fuchsia will be growing up on to the wires. And the grapevine will be strewn across the yard. You know, I think some things don't look like much right now, but a lot of things are popping like the blueberries are in bloom. Hello, blueberries. Oh, yeah, the blueberries. We eat so many blueberries. There's lots of nice new growth. It is February 16th. and Everything is coming out. Um, the strawberry bed definitely needs to be replanted. Um, there's a bunch of chickweed in there right now, which is great eating. Oh, in the daytime, there's lots of little white flowers on it. We'll come back and take pictures of that. It's morning now. This was the strawberry bed, but we're going to transplant some of this back into the herb garden, along with some dandelions and other good. And plantain, which is over here. All excellent medicinal herbs that volunteer wildly for us around here. Two new raised beds. The one in the back is older. And the big brand new project. Building a shed back here. Put some, dug out a whole bunch of gravel yesterday and gonna plant some footings today. We'll come back to that when the light's better, but yeah. Let's go around front. Let's go. Across the deck. Hello, turtle. And go look at some flowers over here. This is a California native called Oso Berry. And it has been budding out for a couple weeks now and blooming. And there is a magnificent red flowering currant. Ribes. Several of these in the yard. We'll go have a look at some. Another one out front. And then the alders. Doing really well. On the side of the yard right now. So many lovely things. There's the boats. It's a native poppy. And all kinds of fun stuff in here. Let's go out front. California toy on. As you can see, we, we'll go back you back out to Trinidad and you'll see that these are all native plants that grow out there and that's where I was inspired to make a hedge out front here with wax myrtle and again, the lovely, beautiful, oh my god, the ribes are so gorgeous. Mmm. Mmm, so pretty. Yeah, let's have a look at the whole hedge. I just did an, a lot of that gravel came out and filled in some of the puddles here. 
so that we can walk without getting our feet wet. Yeah, there's more silk. There's silk tassel and <clears throat> wax myrtle and huckleberries and coyote brush and twin berries and of course more alders. Can't even see the house. That's by design. And just a quick look out front before we go inside and give away prizes. Until a week ago, there was a wood stove out there, and two months ago, there was a refrigerator out there. We have a beautiful Oregon grape, and of course, an eyeball. And oh, yeah, here's an elderberry that's transplanted from the woods across the street. It's all forest and um, public lands right across the street. And all of this obsidian and lava rocks from northeastern California. I have managed to squeeze in a trip here and there and out again. That is beautiful and glassy. All this stuff is really glassy. So here I am, <clears throat> sitting on the couch, watching what you're watching, and I'm tearing the tip of a glove off the thumb with a precision instrument. This is a shard of obsidian from Glass Mountain up in northeastern California. And these edges are incredibly sharp. They actually, I'm using it to do surgery on my glove. I had made the flap um, really integrated and it's not coming undone. It really cuts really well. Take my word for it. It's sharp as can be, especially this little notch right here. So this is, this is like three layers right here. <laughs> Prehistoric knitting, totally stone age. Voila. I've been using it to cut all of my ends and really sharp. <laughs> that is the subfloor that came out of the house that we are burning among a lot of other kinds of wood. And back here, underneath all those tarps, is more of the same, and the uh, old oak floor. I kept as much of it as I could to maybe salvage, but that's going to be a job to get those nails out and plane it all down. Ugh. We've got a lot of it. I might be able to use it in my little house here. Crazy! All right. Sure is nice to not have a dishwasher and a bunch of building materials and tools and sawdust and stuff all over the deck. All we've got and stood is a very happy sunny cat. Yes. And massive gardening potential. Of course. So, let's head on inside. After seven and a half months of intensive work, we have rescued 
a house from certain and awful floor rot to where all bad stuff out, but all good stuff in. A friend of mine gave me a bunch of tile, and so we went to town putting lots of beautiful tile in. And here's the kitchen. That imitation stone linoleum has fooled a lot of intelligent people. And we redid a lot in the kitchen because we destroyed a lot. Those cabinets used to be green, now they're white. The countertop used to be crazy retro, turquoise, um, what is that, vinyl stuff. But in homage to the past, I've put a little turquoise in there. And beautiful bamboo to echo the bamboo floor. Super fun. A couple new cat. These two new cabinets on either side of the stove are new. The fridge used to be in that right corner. And a lovely dining room. A little chair repair in progress. Pay no attention to that, but do please mind the shop vac. The most important tool in the entire project. Oh yeah, and ear covers. All forms of protection were very important. But without that, this project would have never happened. I vacuumed all of the dirt below us and inside of all of the cinder blocks that are the foundation and everything else a thousand times a week. Engineered. Strand woven bamboo, very tough. I don't think it likes water that much, but it's very tough. A little bit more tile work. He's a local artist, tile maker. Super fun. And also the hearth, of course. to refinish the stove. The stove got rusty out there all the time. But yeah, I'll show you a picture of the hearth without the stove and then you can see it a little bit easier, but here's where we're gonna hang out. Talk knitting, give away prizes. Let's go down the hallway first. Had to do lots of touch-ups on the paint, especially on the baseboards, because when we tore the floor out, we tore the heck out of the bases of these walls. We didn't do anything in this hall closet and we didn't do anything in the bathroom because I had, five years ago when I decided to rent this place out, I had already redone and put natural linoleum in here. So didn't want to redo that, but you know, didn't want an entire bathroom remodel as well as an entire home remodel. Um. Yeah, all new paint in the bedrooms, fun. The previous renters made the curtains and they're working really good. But yeah, nice bright white, beautiful views out some of these windows of the big forest across the street. It's acres and acres and acres of community forest across the street, but yeah, that is looking way more purple than it is. It's really more of a purple brown. Desert shadow, it's called. And just a couple more looks. Yeah, heck of a lot of hard work went on in here. So yeah, let's hang out, kick back, and just chat a little bit more. And welcome home. I've got my art, science, nature, knit shirt on <laughs> that my lovely 
future sister-in-law, lady for me. She's very crafty, very handy herself. You saw her. You met her on the boat. Episode two or something like that. Um, she stole my idea. I was thinking about taking all my photographs and making project bags with pictures on them, but she beat me to it. Arr, cool. Thanks, Jean. She's awesome. And on Equinox, March 21st, she will be my official sister-in-law, and I love her. She loves to camp and hike, and she makes my brother do all those things too. So yay! Thanks, Jean. Um, you guys want to share? I wish I could give a shirt away, um, but no, we're gonna give other stuff away. Sorry. So I went into the thread where everyone gave me feedback on the show. Thanks again. Awesome. And since you said you like long shows, this is turning into a long show. <laughs> but I, uh, there were 15 entries, and so I did the random number generator already. And the first winner of this, of these Trelawney Mitts by Sunny Scrivener, who's a lovely designer here, um, First person to win that was number 13 on the thread, and that is Dino Girl, Christy, and Astoria. Hello! Yay, Oregon! I love it up there. I might have to come see you up there sometime. So, yes, that is a place on Earth that could really use fingerless mitts. So, I hope you like knitting fingerless mitts. Um, let me know what your address is, and I We'll mail it along. An actual paper, paper pattern. Hooray! And then the next winner is getting the same designer. I knitted this hat. I showed it to you. It was green ish. And it's the little Bose hat. And it has these cute little, little bows on it. You might be able to see it a little better in that picture right there. And that was to entry number 14, who is Susan in Monterey. Yay! Hi, Susan. Did you get any rain? We've been getting dumped on. I don't think you guys got it down there. Um, but yes, this is perfect for a lightweight yarn for you down there where it's warm. Congratulations. Let me know. Oh, yay. That gives me an excuse to have your address and talk to you some more. Yay. And last but not well, everyone wins, you'll see in a second. This is super exciting. This was totally random, I swear. Number three, entry number three for um, the stitch markers is Nina. Nine o'clock. Who came to visit me? I think I, I might have your address. If I don't, I'll, I'll contact you. But these are super cute. This is from, so my favorite project bag is from Twisted Willows Farms in Michigan. Um, Debbie Hinkle sent me, when I got some from her, she sent me an extra set of stitch markers to give away. And so I am giving them away. So that, and they come in this great little tin. I'm just gonna pour them all out. Basically the little rubbery gasket kinds. There's 15 of these. They fit up to size eight needles and they also come with a beautiful little dangly bubbly one. So Nina, I know you like to do lace so much. These are perfect for you. So congratulations. And Debbie is so awesome. She was so sweet to donate. Thank you, Debbie. Um, she's on Etsy, Twisted Willow Farm, twistedwillowsfarm.etsy.com. And she sends a little stitch marker with her card, and if you order something, it's so fun, so fun. So this, yeah, let me know your address. And everyone else is a winner too. If you entered into this thread, send me your address and I will send you a Knitting is Naughty sticker. There's a picture of it. So yeah, thanks. Thanks for participating and letting me know what you think. It was really super helpful. I, I um, contemplated going to the shorter episode with maybe one little blip about nature or science or something I had learned. And I might do those in the future so that I can record 
we definitely want to record on a more consistent consistent basis. And that was pretty much the number one comment was people just want more. Um, but some people also said they didn't mind if it was inconsistent. But I want to be more consistent because I really like, I can't believe that my podcast is so different than what I like in other podcasts. When, in other podcasts, I like to watch people get straight to the knitting. They're usually, I don't care if they're short or long. I actually like long episodes the most. But a lot of times I like them when they're about knitting. But then there's other ones that I love if I love the topic matter, like Knit, Spin, Farm, which is all about super interesting things like lambing. Hello. Um, so yeah, um, I guess I'll keep doing what I'm doing, and I want to do it more consistently, even if they end up being shorter. And um, So yeah, thanks again for all your feedback. Um, what else is going on? I have an update on the Knit. Um, so today, I recorded it in Trinidad on Tuesday. Today is Sunday. It's a beautiful day. Building another project out there, but yeah, I blocked this. It's wet right now, ew. Um, but I wanted to tell you some of the technicality. Oh, I did a special cast on. I'll name it here um, that I looked up on YouTube because I've been wanting to play with new cast ons, but it's a stretchy cast on and it makes it's perfect for ribbing. It's not a ribbed cast on, but yeah, it's much looser now. Um, and in the construction of this, so I definitely. For the fingers knitted and cast off all the way around and then went back and picked up stitches and I pick them up not just across the back where the hinge will be but also wrap it around a little bit more so it's a little bit tight it makes it a little bit difficult and awkward to get that off but once it's back it just um it just inverts so and then the thumb I didn't want on my fingerless glove, I did the same thing. I cast off all the way around and then went and picked up, and it made a really bulky thumb. So what I did for this one, I did it like three times, because I tried a whole bunch of different things, but basically I cast off, cast off in the front, kept knitting in the back, recast on to make basically kind of a buttonhole, and then kept knitting the cap, and then I came back I had put, when I cast on, recast on, I did a provisional cast on, and then came back and picked up and knitted down to get this to be longer, and then kept these flaps on the side loose and then sewed, sewed them to the side. Because I have a finger of these little convertible gloves in the past where if it's just a buttonhole, it's always a little bit open, it's always a little bit cold, and it wears out really easy. So I really wanted a bomber thumb. Some of the other things I tried were to attach these sides as I knit back and forth, and it just became way too tight and awkward. So I found that to be the best technique. And so I might even consider doing that again in the, in the future on the top part. So what else is going on? Just a couple more things. Um, I got to do SSK! All of a sudden, I guess somebody dropped off the waiting list and I got in, so I'm in California. I don't know where I'm going to be in July. I guess I could just get on a plane from anywhere I happen to be and go to Nashville. Oh my god, I want to come see you all so bad! Um, I'm not sure if I can, but I have, today's the 16th, I have four more days to get the deposit and decide, so should I go? I want to go. Um, I am chalk hunting right now. I do need to go back to Durango. I put in for a bunch of river permits. A friend of mine got a river permit for the Selway River in Idaho, which is ravingly awesome. Difficult permit to get, difficult river to run. I will probably go there. I'm invited. I probably will go. Um, and I got a permit for Desolation Canyon on the Green River in Utah, which is awesome. That was easy to get. If I didn't do that, that would be okay. But didn't get the Green River through Dinosaur National Monument um, and didn't get the Salmon River in Idaho. I don't have a river permit in for the Grand Canyon, but I'm going to get on that list. Mm. But yeah, so July is a popular month for rivers, but I'll probably go to SSK. Maybe I'll come out there and do some eastern rivers in my canoe. Yeah. Okay. Well, I better sign off and get back up to Trinidad and um, back to work. So, 
Thanks for coming out with me. Y'all are awesome. Give me your addresses. I'll put stuff in the mail. And don't forget, knit or tuck. The, uh, we're now we're on the south side of the head, and that's Trinidad Head. We were right there at the top. We were there, and town is there. And this is Camel Rock, Who to Point. There's stairs coming down here, and there's little tiny surfers out there. Kind of fun in this snag here. There are a bunch of licorice ferns right there. Ooh, cyclist. We're on Scenic Drive in Trinidad, and it's a popular spot for hiking and surfing and biking and beach and ridge walking. We are on one of the Peninsulas between the beaches. Trinidad Head in the background. Luffenholz Beach below. Prisoner Rock, Pilot Rock, Sea Lion Rock. They all have names. All those rocks have personalities. The way they dance and play with the waves is each one unique and special. Huge forests. Very rich soils. Very active, deep soil. Damp, drippy, drippy woods, drippy forests. Sick spruce. Right in front of us, the big bad boy, Douglas Fir, right above us. A lot of alder starting to fall into crispy little leaves. Well, damp, moist carpet, forest carpet now. Elder, coast elderberry right here. We've got Redwoods, a little bit of redwoods right here. A little baby redwood. Got salmon berries and thimble berries and all kinds of thorny berries and sword fern. Very, 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 very green. There's some cascara down there and some silk tassel here. Right here. So many, such a huge tree, uh, species diversity of coastal shrubs. Everything thrives here. Nothing doesn't grow. Well, cactus don't grow here, but very, very lush. Very, 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 very healthy, happy forests. And here are the tassels of the silk tassel. I believe these are this year's new growth. A lot of times you can just see last year's, but these are nice and soft. And these are, this is the kind of plant that has male flowers on one plant and female flowers on another plant. And so these are the male flowers, and they're um, putting out the pollen. And the female flowers, if we see them, I'll show you, but they're much bigger. There we go. Go ahead, focus on that. Oh, come on. 
Anyway, there's little tiny flowers in there producing the pollen. Lal in bloom. Those make some beautiful edible berries in the fall. A little more silk tassel in the background. So this, this is the place that is the inspiration for my yard. So when we go back to my house, you'll see that this is what I'm trying to create. Huckleberry, salal, silk tassel, ferns, <laughs> wax myrtle, a wall of plants. Isn't that nice? It's a nice wall of plants, right? Coming down the hill. Slightly different angle of the first view. Trinidad Beach. Let's go walking. We're going to be walking right down here. And then out this way and out there. Actually, we'll come out over there. So, and then there is the lovely little hamlet of Trinidad. Isn't it cute? Finally raining here. Among all the other little buds that are popping out, the raindrops hang on the branches and, and leaves and look like little buds themselves. But among us are real live buds. This is Colt's foot coming up. An excellent herb for respiratory problems. Look how bright and pretty it is. We have so many colors coming out right now. The it's February 6th and the flowering plums are out and many a uh, coastal native are beginning to flower. I'll show you some from my yard, but so nice. And we are here in Trinidad, one of the most gorgeous places on earth, of course. And it's finally raining. We've got about a half an inch rain in this storm, which doesn't sound like much, but summer's finally over and spring is finally here. Spring comes early in this part of the world. Giant stomp. No more need to wonder where all the awesome rocks come from for the beautiful hearth. All you gotta do is go to the beach, to the mouth of the creek, especially when it's raining and wet, and start poking around. Yeah, I don't see anything I like. Kidding. So many nice ones. So many nice rocks. They all look so good in the rain. <laughs> Everyone loves erosion. Look at the piles of sand. Oh my god, it's so cool.
so cool. The sand is so dynamic underneath there and easily moved around by the flow that little ripples form and then wash out and flatten and then they get dug out again until they get too high and wash out again. Constant cycle, moving sand out. See how they go upstream, they migrate upstream. <laughs> this is just a little storm. Imagine what a big storm could do. There's the old woman, old woman rock. She's so awesome. She's got a little bonnet on in the back and she's so perfect. Isn't she cute? I love her. This is my favorite seaweed to eat. Petasites, yum, yum, yum. There's a bunch of nori on this beach too. Let's go look at the nori. Okay, not nori. This is fucus, dead man's fingers. And the, it's also called bladder rack because these little ends get really swollen sometimes, um, like little bladders. And it's also very good to eat. All seaweeds are edible, except one. And I don't think it'll kill you, it just doesn't taste good. It's down in Mendocino and it tastes like a electrical. This is, this is also, I don't know what everything is. I pretty much only know the things that I eat. <laughs> but... There is all the beautiful nori. So seaweeds, they, they stratify themselves by the tide. So this one, the pedicides that we were eating, is uh, upper. And then nori is a little bit lower. And then the dead man's fingers was really low. And then there's ones that are way out to sea that you can only get to by boat, which would be the bullwhip kelps and the sea palms. Feather boa. Feather boa. <laughs> Bullwhip kelp. Torn up. See, that's the part right there that holds onto the ground. And then it coils up 15, 20, 30 feet long. And then this part floats. And then it's not here anymore. It got all torn off from out of the top here is where all these long fronds, like 10, 15 foot long fronds grow. And they're the best eaten. By far my favorite when they're dry. They're brown in the they're green in the water and then they dry. No, they're brown in the water and they dry green. Ah, here's some. That is some of the best food on earth. Ah, stormy. Oh, there goes my hat. The boats are teetering a bit. I don't know if you can see it, but all those little Bobbing black dots out in the middle of the water are bullwhip kettle. Lovely Trinidad. In the rain. Harvest all these. Yeah, we're gonna have and put steam them, in a, them and wine sauce. Steam them and they'll put them in a pot with the seaweed. Sure. <laughs> and wine sauce. Sure. Oh my God, there certainly are enough for everyone. So. Butter and garlic. Butter and mmm. So as soon as the end of the world comes, everyone will come down here and start eating these and they'll be, they'll be gone in a day. <laughs> right? Pretty much. They sure are cool though. Ah! Barnacle, uh, mussels. Oh, and there's barnacles in there too. So 
Muscles and barnacles. Two different critters. Seaweed. A full meal on a rock. <laughs> yeah, man. This is sparkly home sweet home. That's Liffenholtz Cove. It's October 5th. And it is the finest time of year on the Humboldt County wild coast of California. We're looking at Clam Beach and um, to the south and to the north of us is Trinidad. We don't have summer around here until it's after summer. It's October 5th, which we call Indian summer. And it's sparkly. It's some, after 20 foot waves last week, we have the last calm, no wind. We have harbor seals hauling out. Can you see them out there? There's a white one on a little rock in front of the big rock, and there's a few swimming around. There are whales spouting out here still. Trinidad Harbor. That's Trinidad Head. We're out here on a most amazing, most beautiful Thanksgiving week. You can hear the buoy? Yesterday we came out and dropped a crab pot just out past that buoy. And we're gonna go pick it up. Floating around here among the bullwhip kelp. This stuff is 100% edible. All seaweeds are edible, except one. But you don't want to eat that one, it doesn't taste good. And it isn't around here, it's in Mendocino. We're in Humboldt County. And this bullwhip kelp, it's so deep here, I can't see the bottom. It's so incredibly clear these days that paddling out here in the near shore, where it's only about 10 feet deep, you can see ripple marks and starfish. Maybe we'll get some footage of that, but basically it's really very clear and calm. There's only about a three foot swell. Yesterday it was only about two feet and it's been this way for days. So you can see quite deep into the water. But however, here you can see how the um, bulbs keep them afloat and then the fronds the hair-like things are what you eat, and then the hold fast, the stem goes all the way down! Oh man, it's got to be at least 20 or 30 feet deep here. And we dropped the crab pot, it was probably about 40, 50 feet deep. But yeah, this is the lovely town of Trinidad. And the amazing, amazing north coast. I'm in my canoe, trusty canoe that I love, highly maneuverable, and there's my sea kayak with an awesome person in it. Hello, awesome person! Hello, ahoy there, matey! Ahoy! And how are you finding the day? So far, so good. So far, so good. <laughs> it is so warm out here. We have wetsuits on in case we fall in, but we're not falling in. It's too mellow. Come around this way. Ooh, there goes a swell. Little swell. <laughs> All right, where do you want to go? South. Go tootle around the rocks. Harbor seals. Do you see them? On the two rocks. There. And there.
Yeah, buddy. Fatties. Okay, we just hauled this thing up. It was hard. Dungeness crab for Thanksgiving. There's also starfish in there, a little starfish. Oh my god, there's lots of bait left. Good. Okay, we're gonna haul these suckers in. Well, we could lay, we could drop it back in maybe a little closer. No. No. Why would we do that? Uh, we take it with us. Lots of bait. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you're right. We could leave it. So, ah, okay, we'll decide that. Yeah, Heck yeah. yeah. Filming you. Oh, filming. Not so, <laughs> we don't need to film the terrible, horrible, awful <laughs> part where you smash their backs and tear their shell off. We no, don't we don't have to do no, that. No, we don't have to do that. It's ridiculous. No, it's we're not going to do good, that. It's good to show. It's good demonstration of like what you got to do. But. Well, the bounty of the fall. Well, there's all the blood and guts. That's probably enough. So there's my bright, shiny little house. I'm west of it. Uh. north of here and the foreground is the mad river and the background is the pacific ocean woo that's how you like it fine do you remember what it's made out of wool no bamboo no no there's no wool in it alpaca oh well it's wool is it yeah well yeah, it's not yeah, sheep well, wool it's alpaca wool I guess, yeah. It's 50% silk and 50% alpaca. But it's from this alpaca farm up in Steamboat Springs, Colorado. Um, is it too warm to wear around here most of the time? Most of the time, yeah. Oh no. <laughs> but it looks really good right now in the, um, in the light. Oh, good. Do you know that you're on a finished object field trip? That's what we, that's what this is called. Finished object field trip. Okay, I guess I better tell people what this pattern is. It's a slouchy hat. It's Dustland by Stephen West. And it's a fingering white yarn held double. Well, okay. Thanks, Randall. <laughs> you know I'm using a lot of your fiddle.